Hello and welcome to Travel Smart Seniors. Today we're going to take you on a one day trip to a fairy tale city in the Czech Republic, Chesky Krumlov. After we finished our Viking cruise in Budapest, we decided to visit the Czech Republic, starting first with Brno, then off to Chesky Budovice, and then Chesky Krumlov, and finally finishing up in Prague. This documents our one day trip from Chesky Budovice to Chesky Krumlov, and it was just an hour trip by train, and as you can see, the train is not very crowded. The scenery was just wonderful along the way, very, very peaceful. And then finally, we arrived at the Chesky Krumlov train station to get a bit of a surprise. What surprise was that, you may ask? Well, the train station is well above the town and not in the center of town, so we had to walk down a very steep hill to get to the center of town. We didn't see any taxis, so we just followed some people that had gotten off the train down the street until we came to a very windy path that led us finally down into the city. Fortunately, the path wasn't that steep but I was worried about going back up. But it did offer some very spectacular views of the city from above. The town is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and it's famous for its really well-preserved medieval architecture, cobblestone streets, and a stunning natural setting along the Vltava River, which flows into Prague from here. The castle, which you see here, is one of the largest in the Czech Republic and dates back to the 13th century. Well, we finally finish our downhill walk and enter the city through one of the remaining old gates, the Budweiser Gate, which points towards Chesky Budovice. I will explain the relationship to Budweiser at the end of this video when we visit Chesky Budovice. So the old town is really a charming maze of narrow streets with lots of colorful and historic buildings. It's a perfect place to wander around with squares, quaint shops, galleries, and cafes, and the design has really remained unchanged since the 18th century. As we turn, we see our first destination, and that's the Castle Tower. It was originally built in the 13th century, and here we stand in front of the gate, going into the castle itself. But before we do, we can take a look downwards and see what remains of the original moat to the castle. The castle has 40 buildings around five courtyards. It has Renaissance architecture, towers, frescoes that reflect really the wealth and power of the noble families who lived here. The castle is open with its six floors and 162 steps to the top, where you do get a beautiful view of the city. Fear not, because there are also some panoramic views of the city on the way up to the top of the castle itself, and they appear through these little alleyways or doorways in the castle. This was a very interesting little courtyard. None of this is real. Those are all flat walls, and it's trompe l'oeil, which gives the impression of being 3D. Trompe l'oeil is French, and it means to deceive the eye, which it certainly does. Next, we come across this archway, which spans a lower area between the two parts of the castle. And on either side of this archway, you get some very, very wonderful views. And I have to apologize because the lens on the camera was a little bit dirty there. We continue up and come across a very beautiful viewpoint, and we can look back at the arches where we just were, and then you get a spectacular view of the city and the Vltava River itself. Now this is what I imagine the view from the tower is if you climb the 162 steps, but I am basically pretty lazy, so I got my drone out and went for a short flight to get some ideas of how wonderful the city really is. The architecture and the Bohemian hills and the mysterious clouds add to the fairy tale like effect. Well, it's a bit of a hike back down from where we were above these arches in that archway up there, but it seems like it's time for lunch. So we take a look at the Vitava River 
and it looks like there may be some restaurants across the way over there. Just to the right of the bridge as we cross, we see something that looks promising, but we're distracted by yet another view of the tower. We happened upon this delightful little restaurant with benches and tables that sat right on the river itself. So we were treated to a wonderful lunch and also some very great views of the river. We had a great view of the river and were able to watch some of the boaters go down the weir to the lower level part of the river. Lunch wouldn't be complete without a glass of budvar. This is the Czech Budweiser, which is brewed in Česky Buda Jovica. It is not at all related to the Anheuser-Busch Budweiser in the United States, and there are some legal disputes about the two. Well, after a very satisfying lunch, it's time to cross the river and go in and start exploring the old town, and there is much to see. Oh yes, and there's the ever-present tower looming above us, and you can see the rocks on which the castle is built. Before we start to explore the old town itself, we go through the town to the Krumlov Monastery. This was founded in 1350, and it has a preserved set of three monasteries from the middle of the 14th century. It is really worthwhile to spend a few minutes and actually go into the monastery. And our first stop in there is the Church of the Body of Christ. It has Gothic vaulted ceilings and Baroque altars and very elaborate frescoes. It originally was built in Gothic style and was later modified with Baroque elements. It's a key part of the spiritual life of the monastery. I should mention that it's no longer used as a monastery, but as you walk through, you get an idea of what monastic life might have been like, and you even see some old frescoes from ancient times still remaining on the walls. This is not a main church, but this is one of the side chapels with these highly decorated frescoes on the ceiling and the walls, and it's meant for silent contemplation in here. It really is beautiful. And then we decide it's about time, one last hallway, and we head out into the city itself. So after we leave the monastery, we take a short detour down to the river's edge where we encounter some very interesting sculptures. These are part of a modern art initiative designed that really to blend contemporary art with the historical and natural environment of the city. What's most interesting is we have these abstract body part sculptures and surrounding medieval architecture, which is a unique dialogue between old and new. This was also a perfect opportunity to get the drone out and do some flying around here so that you get a real feeling for the beauty and the very fairy tale nature of the city. So sit back and relax for a few minutes as I take you on a flight above Chesky Krumlov. <music> back towards the river, you can see a little dot on the bank, and that happens to be me flying the drone. The river is very, very popular for boating, 
And I have just recently read an article saying that they're worried about over-tourism and sometimes the river gets quite busy. But this was in late September, so it didn't appear to be much of a problem and very, very beautiful. All right, so now we cross the bridge and head into the center of the old town. And along the way, you see some very interesting shops and stores. This was particularly interesting because you can get puppets and wine. We didn't go in to check it out. This little path led us into the main square, which is where you'll find the tourist bureau if you want to actually go in and check things out. As we leave the square, we come across some beautifully decorated buildings along here. And the most interesting was this particular hotel. And take a look at the things you see in the windows. Again, it's this artwork that mixes modern art with the old feeling of the city. And speaking of modern art, Chesky Kumlov is the home to Egon Shiley. His mother was born here and he moved in 1910. He was part of the Art Nouveau movement in Vienna. And his stay here didn't last all that long because the very conservative citizens were concerned about him painting nudes of adolescent girls. Also on display in the museum is some of the works of a guy named Jans Franz, who was Austrian to begin with, and he was actually an apprentice colleague of Arnold Schwarzenegger. In 1991, Jans Franz became the enfant terrible of the Austrian art scene and enjoyed international success. Well, it's starting to get late and time to think about heading back to the train station to catch the train back. But before we do that, we walked up past St. Vitus Cathedral, which is a beautiful cathedral built in 1407. However, we didn't have enough time to stop and go in it. From there, we continued up the hill past the Hotel Ruza to where there was a little courtyard opposite the hotel that gave us some absolutely spectacular views of the city for one last look at the city. Well, it's a beautiful city, and we certainly enjoyed the time we had here, and I think it's on our list to come back and see again. But now it's time to think about getting back to the train, and I am not about to walk up that great big hill. So we discovered up the hill a little bit was a bus terminal. So we walked up to the bus terminal and were able to get a bus up to the train station. Once we were at the train station, we didn't have to wait very long and soon arrived in Chesky Budajovica. We arrived shortly after sunset, but it was so beautiful that I once again decided to get the drone out and give you an aerial view of the main square in the city. City Hall was a work of art in itself, with beautiful statues and frescoes on the front. Opposite the City Hall was the Hotel Zvan, which was our hotel on the main square, and it was just a wonderful, wonderful place to stay. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you would subscribe, it would sure help us out. Thanks for listening.